Welcome everybody to the Tris Brina Show on a Thursday. And we've got some juicy for you today. What are we doing, my dear? Well, in last week's episode, we focused on age-related muscle loss. Sarcopenia. And and it was good, but we didn't know it was that good. We had so many emails and comments yes, and phone amazing. calls like that was really helpful, and I really appreciated the exercises that you showed. And I'm like, we didn't show very many, and it was such appreciation no. that we thought we would love to have a brief conversation with you about that again, and and about how, at, from the age of 30 on, we are losing at least 5% of our muscle mass per decade, 5 to 8%. 8%, that's five what Five to I'm 8%. Hearing. That's crazy. And once we're 60, you're losing any more, which means, you know, by the time you're Even what, more, yeah. 80, you've lost 30% of your muscle mass. Now, many people look the same size. So what if you look the same size, but you've lost 10% at 50 years old of your muscle mass? What does that mean? It means that if you can see inside of you, instead of your bones being surrounded by muscle to protect them, muscle to tug on the end so you increase your bone density, right. surrounded by this beautiful layer of fat and skin, and fascia. is that there's now much less muscle and there is more fat. So you're burning far fewer calories to stay alive. Your balance is probably not as good. And if you fall, you're probably going to get injured more than you would Less if protection. you had more muscle mass. Absolutely. And muscle is like spandex for your body. So it just makes you look better, right? <laughs> it pulls all the jiggly bits in and it gives you that tone that we all love so much. And it's not a vanity play per se. It definitely is for injury prevention, but it's also for lifestyle, the ability to, you know, get up and, and do stuff, right? Even just laying in bed. Sometimes people feel like, oh, it's hard to get up because they've lost some of the muscles in their core. Mm -hmm. Or even just yeah. sitting down in a chair or getting up out of a chair, yeah. right? Like, And as you start to lose your strength, you lose your mobility, and then you lose your desire to do more stuff. And mm -hmm. it's just this spiral downward. And we don't want that to happen to you and it's definitely not happening on our watch in this household yep. so we're going to show you some of the cool stuff that we like to do today yeah and what studies say is that um, one of the first thing that happens as people get older if they aren't aware of their muscle mass and their energy and and staying young even as they get old, there's this youthfulness to the vitality if there isn't a focus on that if there isn't a time commitment to doing that one of the first things to go is the front of the thighs, which is the quadricep. Mm -hmm. So why why would you need a strong quadricep? Well, to walk, <laughs> yeah. to walk upstairs, to walk downstairs, to sit down, to get up, to sit on a toilet, to get up, to, to not need a walker, to I not need a wheelchair. Yeah. Beyond the walker, kick ass. <laughs> Sometimes you need to kick somebody. I don't want to got to be able to kick. So, well, that's that's one of the first muscles that a lot of people start experience a weakness in, and then maybe even atrophy. Because oftentimes, what happens is, let's say somebody starts having some knee pain due to inflammation, and of course, we would get them into a qigong program immediately. But let's say that they that didn't happen. Well, then, what do we? What's the tendency? Oh, I want to avoid that pain. So what, we move less, and we do less, and then there's more diminishing of the muscle, and then there's a more tendency towards atrophy. So besides the front of the legs, the other part of the body that diminishes the first is the core, is, are the abdominals. <laughs> Why should you care? Well, how are you gonna get out of bed, yeah. right? Haven't you seen people who just like sitting up in bed seems, seems to be tough? Uh, getting in and out of a car, it's not just your leg strength, it's also the core strength. Bending over to tie a shoe. You know, when Tristan had his back injury, and for those five years during a large part of it, they put him in a brace to support his back. But what that did is it took the place of all of his core muscles. So yeah. remember when you took the brace off? Yes, a lot of weird stuff happened. It, it was weird it went looking bloop. under there. It was. <laughs> It wasn't just, it, it, I wouldn't say it's like it was fat, it was atrophy. It was atrophy. Lack it, was, of it was like dead muscle. Yeah, yeah it, it, was it, very... was, it was very asleep. 
and I had a lot of what's called sensory motor amnesia, which means because I hadn't been firing those muscles, the brain doesn't send the signal to those muscles and it kind of takes that information and stores it in your brain stem. But the good news is you can reactivate it and get those muscles firing again and get the brain sending the information you need it to send to so you're actually able to use the, the muscles again. Like a lot of time they're literally asleep. So uh, other amazing reasons to have a good core so that not only you can sit up, but so that you can rotate and you can protect your spine. Mm -hmm. Your core protects your back. You have a yeah. weak core, you start leaning and laying into the muscles of the spine, right. creating more compression mm -hmm. on those beautiful discs of yours because you're not holding your posture. Yeah. So let's get you I saw this uh, infographic fit. and it showed, you know how a toddler sometimes will stand back with their belly out and it's, it's so cute. And it went from a toddler to like a middle schooler to somebody middle age and they were perfectly straight. And then to a senior and a senior and a senior and it started going down. That's what the girls looked like the other day outside the gym class. There was a little pot of girls and they were all walking like this with their phone. <laughs> I'm like, you look like little old people. I'm like, well, get off the damn phone. Uh, and we've got a ninja here. Kobe, welcome to the party. She got very excited when she heard us talking about this conversation. And yeah. she's a physical therapist ninja. She says the core is the basis of the pyramid. Yep. Do sh share more as we unfold this thing. Yeah. We'd love to hear from you yeah so I just want to be clear this is not about um, winning a fitness competition although go, go for it yeah. this this is about being mindful right uh, let's say this most people look in the mirror and they're like oh I have a gray hair I'm getting old I got some wrinkles oh I have marionette lines my skin looks crepey but they forget to look a little bit more internal mm. Oh my gosh, Under the what I am inside is diminishing and that is true aging. So if you can, can work to do what you can so that you're not losing five to 8% of muscle mass per decade, and it is possible because that's what we focus on and that's what our students experience. And when your muscle mass increases, usually the bone density will increase. Why? because when you're doing the resistance training, it tugs on the ends of the bones. One thing it does is tell the brain, hey, that bone needs to be stronger. She's gonna be tugging on it with some resistance and what else? Well, because it stimulates the energy <laughs> of your bones. And so your bones are powerhouses within the body. They produce all those new fresh stem cells that are the, creators of all and they're mm -hmm. like little god cells right they yeah. can go and rebuild anything in your body and so when you tug on the bones you cause a, a charge inside yeah. the bones so yeah. you want that i've also noticed this is my own personal opinion that many of the seniors that i spend time with are often cold cold mm. cold which could be circulation right mm -hmm. um what could help with circulation movement because movement will help the car, the the vascular system. It will help you have more capillaries. It will help you move more blood into the extremities so that they don't get cold. Another thing, if you've ever slept next to someone who does have decent muscle mass, right, and, and works out and does things with resistance, it's like, you're a freaking heater next to me. What is all this heat coming off your body? You can't sleep next to some rain. And it's like metabolism. It's like laying next to a furnace. <laughs> no, like I'd like to be lovely and pet and like, uh, let's cuddle. I'm like, oh no, <laughs> you're too hot. <laughs> too hot in a hot tub. It's too so, hot. So if you had um, a pound of muscle and a pound of fat, well, first of all, the pound of muscle is going to be small. So let's just imagine, oh, it looks like a golf ball. And then a pound of fat is going to look way more like a baseball or like a Nerf ball. And it's going to be the be same weight. but The same weight. One is small, one is big. So, so you would think, well, that fat's going to take a lot more calories to stay alive. It's so much bigger, but that's not true. Mm. Muscle needs calories. Muscle it needs energy it. to stay alive. So all night long, even when you're not using the muscle, it's like... Mm, 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 I'm eating up those calories. Where <laughs> 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 you come up with your analogies, man. <laughs> it's hilarious. Okay, can we show these? 
friend some moves? Yeah, so what we thought we'd do, let me just take a big swig. That's the name of the drink. It is a water drink. It's just show you a few things. So let me tell you a little bit of background. So my father, we all lived together. Um, he was having knee issues and it was kind of, there was some bone issues in the leg. He didn't, wasn't really a good candidate for a knee replacement. So he kind of stopped moving so much mm -hmm. because there was pain and there was a couple of falling down. Right? And so that's Yeah, scary. fall down, go boom was scary. So it's like, oh, okay. Face so, so pulled back on the movement. Hey, we'll go get that for you. We'll take care of that. Let us help you. Yep. But then that wasn't the right, that was not the right move. <laughs> move. <laughs> um, because then when we um, took him to physical therapy, they said the quadricep muscle had atrophied because we weren't moving because of the falling down and the pain in the knee. So some of his therapy were simple, simple exercises to rebuild the quadricep. So I said, th these would be fantastic to share with our community. Since that's the first muscle to go, what are some simple things that you can do without any equipment at all to help strengthen that quadricep muscle before it ever Gets into atrophy. And these are movements that Sabrina was doing for quite a while after a car accident that we had years yep. ago. Yep. We were passengers in the back of a taxi and got in a head-on, and it jacked up her knee and cartilage pretty damn bad. And so they gave her some pretty amazing exercises. Are you going to share one of those today? I'm going to share a one, two, three, four. Four exercises. Okay, and I have two. Mm -hmm. So we have six exercises for you today. Let us begin. So I'm going to show you the exercises, or we are, and feel free to follow along because if you just watch like Netflix, you're going to go, oh yeah, I'm going to do that later and I get it. And most likely you don't get it. But some, something about stepping in and giving it a go right along with me, then your brain body connection is going to be stronger. So some of the things I'm going to say, let's do 10 of them. But when you do them in your own practice, you're going to do three sets of 10. But we won't do three sets here on the broadcast because this is a 30-minute quickie show. Okay. Let's uh, set you up in the back just a tiny bit and we'll oh, switch the microphones. Absolutely. Let me come down. Why don't you put yourself where you want to be? And uh, you guys let us know if you have any trouble hearing us. We should be good, though. Can here we go. Can you move your face? Move my face. <laughs> Can you move your face? Get your face out of here. There we go. Look at you, you're tiny. Okay, can you see her? Mm -hmm. And this microphone should be hot. You can Let... sit right there. Thank you. <laughs> you're so funny. <laughs> okay, this is as short as this chair gets. I'm gonna move back because I think it's important that you see my feet, which are flat on the floor. Okay, the floor is yours. All right, sit down. Yes. Okay, the first exercise is actually just standing and sitting, right? Because you want to do on repeat what you want to be able to do well in life. So all we're going to do is stand up and sit down, controlled and with a pause in each direction. Now, maybe you're at a place where you need your hands and maybe you're going to stand up and then maybe you're going to sit down. Did you see how I use the chair? Or maybe you're going to stand up using your thighs and sit down. But, sure. then, but then the goal would be stand up, sit down. Okay, ready team? Here we go, 10 times. Five, six, seven, eight. Stand up sit down stand up sit down stand up hello sit down stand up four sit down stand up five sit down stand up six sit down stand up seven who's writing you're not doing it sit down you can help stand yourself up too eight. if you need to sit down stand up nine sit down stand up ten sit down good now of course the height of the chair is going to 
uh, play into the difficulty. So you wouldn't want to be in a cush, cush, cush chair. I also, I'm not sitting back here where my feet don't touch the floor. I'm sitting at a place where my knees are right over my toes. My feet are apart. My knees are tracking over the middle toe so that as I use my quadriceps to engage and I pull up, I'm standing in a really nice position. And then as I sit down, trying not to do this, right? Just trying to almost squat. Okay, so that's exercise one. Exercise number two is all about the leg. <laughs> now, this is for the quadricep. You're going to straighten the leg with the flex foot and you're gonna hold it. One, two, flex your foot. One, two, three, lower. Okay, so I'm just gonna do the same leg 10 times. You could also do one and one, one and one, so that each leg gets 10. Ready, straight spine, tummy in, shoulders down. You could hold onto the chair if you need to. Flex and two and three, lower. Flex and two and three, lower. Flex, it's tight, it's tight, lower. Flex, tighten it, tighten it, tighten it, lower. Flex, two, three, lower. Flex, two. You're tightening all the muscles around the knee. Flex, two, three, lower. It's a challenge. Flex, two, three. You need to do it more. No, it's really Flex, good. It's like at the gym. two, three, lower. And I lost count, but that felt like 10, lower. Ooh, oh, you feel that? I felt that. <laughs> that was okay. incredible. This next one. You're going to just do one leg or both? No, on the next one, I'm going to do both legs. Oh, 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 oh I'll do the other leg too. Okay, ready? I'm We're going to so do excited. 10 on this since Tristan wants to. Five, wants six, to. seven, eight, and a one, and a two, and a three. Lower. You can hold on to the chair. Lower. You could hold on to the thighs. Lower. Making sure you flex your foot. Lower. Straighten, 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 straighten. Lower. Pull the belly button back to the spine. Lower. Straight. You're getting your core straight, a little too. Straight. And straight, straight, straight. How many more do you think we should do? Three, two, one. Four more. <laughs> Pull the toes up, pull the toes up, 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 and one more, two, yes. three, lower. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. <laughs> you really can feel that. I do. I feel the, a bit of burn. Okay. So now this, this one's nice. I need to walk my feet out a little bit. So you'll walk your feet out a little bit. So pick your toes up and make sure that they're not back here. That wouldn't feel good. So my heels are under my knees. Okay, so all we're gonna do, we can work both feet at the same time. We're gonna go up on the toes. Look at that. Pointing, mm, you feel that in the shins and the calves. Yes. Down, flex. Oh, Down, yeah. ready? We're doing mm -hmm. 10. Five, six, seven, eight. One, and oh, two, yeah. and oh, three, mm -hmm. and four, and five and point and seven and ho ho eight and it burns nine and ten and whoo really gets into that <laughs> shin muscle in the front and the calf and if you if you ever go walking and you like are walking up a hill or down a hill you might have um felt strain in the shins or the calves, this will keep that in really good condition so when that happens, you don't feel it. Okay, I have one more for you. This one, I'm gonna stand up and work the hamstring. So the hamstring is the opposing muscle to the quadricep. So I will pull this up for you. Okay, what I want you to do, this time I'm using the chair just to hold on to. Okay, the most important part of this exercise is the distance between the back of this leg and the front of this one. 
I want that distance to be as great as possible. And I'm going to go ahead and show you this leg too, because I want you to bend it. Why? Stacking of bones is great, but it doesn't develop muscle as much as trying to have a bent leg requires much more muscle and balance. So you can use your chair as much as you need to. You going to do this one? I'm going to take care okay. of the comments. All right. So see how my foot is flexed. All you're going to do is bring that heel towards your butt and put it back down. Now here's what most people do that I don't want you to do. As they bend the leg, they go like this and they don't even know they're doing it. So you have to think, knee, stay where you are. Bend and straighten. Okay, ready? A five, six, seven, eight, one. Well, you can see that and muscle right there. Two. Very nice. And three. Human spandex. And four. Look at my supporting leg, it's bent. Five. And the foot is flexed. Six. And this knee is very far apart from that one. And eight. Who you feel that back tushy? Mm-hmm. I do too. Nine. Ten. Wow. Whew. Yeah. Two legs. Ready? I should have just worn shorts. So position, bent leg, flexed foot. Hands for support. One. Good job. Two. Keep I'll that. Coach. Keep that Way knee to go, back. Tiger. You got Flex this, the kid. foot. Four. Not much weight. Five. See, I'm not really even using it. Six. Try Fantastic. not to turn out. Seven. Keep that knee bent. Good four. Eight. Nine. Great disposition. Ten. Good. Amazing. Now I'll give you a little bonus. Uh oh, bonus. Woohoo! Here's the bonus. What? What? Oh, just go up on your toes and down, up on your toes and down. Three, four, five, six, seven. Straight spine. Eight. Tummy in. Elbow down. All right. Mm -hmm. Ready? Yeah, it's my turn. Yeah. Okay, I'll trade places with you. Okay. Well, what I like to do, <clears throat> or what I'd like to share with you, is an exercise that not only strengthens your legs, but also keeps your back from getting too tight, too stiff. So when I was in my phase of back healing, I studied everything I could about the physiology for the spine and for the back. And one of the things I found out, and you may know this already, is when your hip flexors get too tight, they cause the back to get pulled out of what's called neutral spine. And they cause the, the hip flexors. So think of, feel where your, your hip bones are, right? You can feel your hip bones in the front. Well, there are muscles from your spine called the psoas. You got a psoas. It, from your spine, from your lower lumbar spine inside, there's a psoas muscle that goes along and attaches. It comes from inside, if you could imagine, attached to your spine, it attaches down here into the hip. So the hip flexor is the base part of that long psoas muscle. And so when it gets shortened and tight, it causes the leg to crimp and pull in and it causes your back to get stiff and tight. Additionally, if your back of your leg, your hamstrings get too tight, that can cause your, your body to pull you back like that. So anyway, one of the things that I love is to open up my hip flexor consistently. Um, I think one of the reasons that mine got tight, and maybe you do moves where you're lifting your knees up a lot. I was doing a lot of knees and kicks and crunches. Maybe you do crunches and sit-ups and I wasn't opening up my hip, hip flexor properly. I could do the, the stretches, um, but I it was it was just overworked and too tight. So here's what I do. You can use a chair. You can use a chair, absolutely. You can use a chair for support and 
I'll just put it off to the side enough that you can see. And I'm in a forward lunge position. So my knee is bent, but not so far that it's going past my toes or shoelaces. It's right over my ankle. A little bit over the shoelaces is okay, right? Imagine you had shoelaces if you don't. The back foot, I'm gonna do it without the chair and then I'll pull the chair in so you can see. The back foot, the heel is up. So this is a lunge position, right? In the martial arts, we have a stance called a forward stance. You've seen it also in yoga, right? In this power posture. But in this one, we're gonna lift the heel up. And then rather than pitching forward, we're going to train our body to go down and come back up. You don't have to go super deep. <clears throat> and you're getting this muscle here. So you're getting your quadricep muscle. But mainly what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to lengthen this hip flexor area we talked about and drop it down. So I'm not doing like a big squatting motion. So it's the concept is to drop that down and you'll feel that, right? I'll turn to the front so you can see. You can just hold onto a chair. My legs are about shoulder width apart for balance, okay? So you shouldn't need a chair, but if you do, that's fine. And then watch. That back knee goes towards the floor. Okay. I, like, I like using the chair. Chair's great. Okay. We'll do it from this side. How Same many? thing. You see how the knee is staying in place? It's the hip. We'll talk about <clears throat> frequency in a moment. So the hip is dropping. Now here's the next thing that's really nice is you can hold this and lengthen up through your core. So you're pulling the ribs and the muscles attaching around the ribs and the spine up as you're dropping in and down. This is an incredible stretch for the hip flexor. Okay. How many of those? I don't think you have to be going up and down. I just, I like, I like doing lunges, but this is more of like a holding posture, lengthening. I give yourself 15 to 30 seconds and really reach up with the fingers. Now, if you want to strengthen the leg, since we're talking about leg strength and muscles, now <clears throat> pulse and bring your whole body up and drop it down. And so here's the cool thing. As you get stronger, you can work towards getting the knee close to the floor, keeping the, the front knee, knee mm -hmm. over the shoelaces. And this is, you can hold weights for this. You can also lean forward to do these and pulsing. You can also put your hands on your back leg here and work into the back side of the legs as well. Okay, so that's great for quads and opening up your hip flexors. Strong legs, healthy spine. Now the last one that Sabrina asked me to share with you, I need to be on the floor. Uh, I'm gonna do it on the wood. I think it's fine. So basically, Maybe. as far as getting to the floor, there's different ways. I would just do it however works best for you. You can hold onto something and drop down. That's another reason to have that quad strength. You can just sort of spin yourself down slowly. That's one way I like to do it. Anyway, <clears throat> in martial arts, there's a technique called the umpa in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And the umpa. I'm gonna put this red under you because it will help show you. I love a red carpet <laughs> technique. Bentley's blanket. Bentley's blanket. <laughs> so the umpa is when somebody gets across your body and you're grappling and they, um, they're sitting on your chest and they're here and they're pinning you down. So maybe you've done this when you were a kid. You bring your legs in close and they're on top of you and you push and try to bump them off you. Well, that's called the bridge. So I like to get my ankles close to my booty for this and pull them in a little bit. Flat spine. And then what you're gonna do is I like to think of taking my hip bones straight up. Place my arms flat on the floor and pitch up. Now I'm squeezing my bum strong towards the top. And you hold two, three, 
every time. Just like when we extended, we held, hold, two, three. That's what's gonna really strengthen that muscle. So you're gonna feel your booty get strong, but also your core, because you're stabilizing your core up here and your back muscles. So this whole section is nice and locked, and then the booty. Now here's one other thing you can do. You can keep a flat back and go up and down. But what's nice to do on the way down is to roll your spine down. That's just an extra thing I like to do is slinky my spine. So I'm articulating the vertebra mm -hmm. from up high and I'm rolling it down piece by piece or straight up and down squeeze and so you can you add sabrina's technique of extending the leg Ooh. and hold it out here this is going to get your quad on this side and your booty and hold it out so you could do 10 sets holding for three counts each and i mean 10 repetitions in three sets and put it in a sequence with what we showed you earlier voila mm -hmm. okie dokie All right, so let's do just a, a quick, quick verbal review, right? We said you could sit and stand in the chair. You could sit and extend 10 times per leg. We said you could go up and flex, right? Hamstring, pelvis, and lunges. That's a lot of stuff. <laughs> Plenty of stuff. All right. There's a plethora of moves around here. And it's nice to have variety because you can never get bored. Ooh. All right. I tell you, the, the reason people, I think, sometimes are not consistent is that when they're doing the exercises, they're not present and really focused on all the details. So. Everything that we said out loud while we were demonstrating, long spine, tummy in, shoulders down, flex the foot, hold one, two, three, lower. Those are things I would be saying if I was alone inside my head. I'm constantly scanning. There's a lot to do to get massive benefit in a small amount of time. That's why you know we all love getting together in our Life Force Mastery Dojo and doing these exercises together because uh, the commentary during keeps the mind focused, like some of the people were saying in the live chat. Oh, wow, some of the nuances that you said, I applied them and I immediately felt a difference. Right, so you don't want to do this. This isn't like sit and think about what you're gonna you know, cook for the grandkids while you throw your leg up and down. It's about really being present. And it doesn't take very much time to have a huge difference and to stop that decline in muscle mass to at least sustain it, if not grow, we, increase. We, we love movement and we love feeling strong because when you feel strong in your body, you feel strong, obviously, in your mind and it affects your psychology. It gives you that sense of, I am able, mm -hmm. I can contribute, I can protect, I can handle this. I got this. And um, I have noticed different phases of my life when I didn't feel able and it affected my mood. I absolutely got into a place of deep, dark depression when I was very injured and out of it. And so we can totally relate to any of you who are struggling with the physical body. But the body, if you can start to approach it as a friend that's trying to teach you something, or perhaps call your attention in, uh, but not from a place of beating ourselves up. So sometimes we'll see somebody do something and say, I can't do that. Well, we get it. Sometimes you can't do that yet, but you can do a variant of that. Mm -hmm. You can do a modification of that. And and I could I in, inject in a minute, there's two reasons you might not be able to do it. Absolutely. So for me to get out of that dark depression, I had to find the right thing for me. And so hopefully with Satori, you're finding the right thing for you. I learned Qigong laying on the ground. 
I couldn't stand up for very long. I couldn't do any of that. I used to be able to do it when I was younger and then I got broken, but I could do the Qigong. So if anything you're seeing today is too much, make sure you're tuning into our energy classes mm -hmm. and then do these later. And if you can do these, we will show you during the five day energy expansion, how these muscular, physical, fascia-like movements actually can help increase your life force energy because there's a next step after this. Yeah, the energy expansion is a five-day free energy event that we do two times a year. Um, I was going to say the two reasons that you may not be able to do something is number one, your muscle isn't strong enough right now, right? You, you can't extend your leg and hold it for three seconds. Why? Because you haven't practiced. So you hold it for one second, one second. And guess what? Next week you hold it for two and then the next week you hold it for three. Or if you do 10, every other one you make it to three. So one reason is your muscle just isn't strong enough, but that's the nature of muscles is to get stronger, right? Just like the toddler, just like the toddler, their muscles aren't strong enough to stand. They fall down. They have to learn. They have to learn balance. But the other reason is you simply, we haven't asked our brain to do that. So you say, brain, do that. And it's like, what? I haven't talked to my a flexed foot in years. <laughs> I, 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 like I completely lost track of a flexed foot. I don't know how to do that. So there is this brain body connection where you have to learn how to say flex the foot. You have to and so what is that good for? Well, of course it's good for your muscle, but it's so good for the brain. That's why movement is one of the number one things they tell people with Alzheimer's and dementia to do is to move because your brain is lighting up. I know when I've taught people these rib isolations, the first thing out of 90% of people is, oh, my body doesn't do that. I'm like, oh yes, it does. You just don't know how to tell it to do that. So imagine I have a puppy and I throw the ball and I say, go fetch that and bring it back to my foot. And the other person says, my dog doesn't do that. And I go, well, yes, it does. If I train it to, and if you train it to, it would love to do that. It would love to go get the ball and bring it back. And that's the way your body is. You, you have to learn how to tell it to do things and to be kind and patient with it the way you would with a little puppy. Say, yeah, that's good. You flexed once. Like, be easy on yourself. Like cheer yourself on for the things that you can do and you'll find yourself being more excited to do more. Don't beat yourself up. No. Well, what's, what good is that? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Hey, those moves that Sabrina showed us sitting down, I feel those in my legs. <laughs> and I, I'm a guy that likes to lift heavy weights and go to the gym and do leg extensions and squats and... You know, I do feel sore sometimes too, but those were targeting. Because they're slow. They're yeah. slow. You're using your own natural body weight, and they targeted the muscle so well that my quadriceps are talking to me right now in a really <laughs> good way. We, I think what happened was they are firing aspects of the nerve fibers or the muscle fibers in a new way, and your body needs new information, right? muscles need to be challenged they need a little bit of confusion and that's what causes them to on that note time to dance it out <laughs> love you guys till next time <laughs>